Good morning. Welcome to worship, and I'm Pastor Laura, and I offer a welcome to those of you sitting here in person, and also give a shout out to those joining and connecting with us online. Um, I want to share about something that happened yesterday that you all were a part of. Six of us volunteered at the Bristol Habitat for Humanity House that is being built right now. Um, and State Street is one of the financial sponsors of that house. And so six of us were able to be there. And um, I, I just was reminded of something that I should know and remember, but sometimes forget. And that is when you give you are blessed um, in so many ways, and each of us had a fantastic time, um, and also uh, had Megan, whose home it is, uh, with us, um, and so just um, what we're going to be talking about today a lot is how when we give, we get so much more um, in return. We give to God when we worship. We give to God when we serve. We give to God when we love. Um, and we receive so much more. And Alex Littleton is our lay leader. And also Alex is the chair of our children, youth, and family ministries team. And she's going to come share with you about something fun we have coming up in just a couple of weeks here at church. All right. Good morning. Um, so, like Laura said, I'm Alex Littleton, um, and in my role as a team lead for our children, youth, and family team, in coordination with some of the other program teams here at the church, we are planning a Palm Sunday celebration. Um, so, this will take place on, you guessed it, Palm Sunday, um, Sunday, April 2nd, immediately following the 11 o'clock service at noon, um, we'll be joining in fellowship downstairs in the fellowship hall um, to share a meal. The church will uh, provide the main course, so we're just asking you guys to bring a, a covered dish, so a side dish or a dessert. Um, then also with that, we've got a couple of fun activities planned. One is an intergenerational scavenger hunt, so if you have not um, been able to explore the entire church yet, uh, that will get you out and about. Um, and then we'll also have an egg hunt for the kiddos. Um, so, but which you are more than welcome to participate, participate in, whether watching the kids or helping them find eggs. Um, so that will be Sunday, April 2nd at noon. Like we did with the last picnic, we'll ask those that come to the 845 service or the 9 o'clock service to help with setup. And then those of you that attend the 11 o'clock service can kind of help with cleanup. So there will be stuff in the newsletter, in the bulletins for the next couple of weeks and online. Um, and I think I said newsletter. So, uh, yeah, hope you all can join us. And thank you, Alex. And we look forward to that time of, of sharing together. And I invite you just to turn to your neighbors and um, offer a smile, a wave, um, a bow in prayer for one another. Uh, that's another way. When you give a smile, you often receive a smile in return. And let's prepare our hearts for worship.
please stand and join responsively in singing, or uh, sorry, in speaking our call to worship. Welcome, pilgrims, on the way to the cross. We are learning to follow Jesus. On this Lenten journey, where do we find God's presence among us? One day we know God calls us to witness extraordinary love in ordinary moments. On this Lenten journey, how does God's presence work among us? One day we know. On this Lenten journey, what does God's presence do in our midst? One day we know, God opens us to recognize presence, sustenance, and abundance where the world perceives isolation and lack. Pilgrims, on the way, come let us worship God. We come to worship God. Remain standing and, and join in singing hymn number 261, Lord of the Dance. prepared to go to God in prayer this morning. I have a couple of celebrations and also some concerns to share that 
uh, we've been asked to lift up this morning. I want to offer a thank you to Anna and Pat Burns, who are here today, and also Becky Littleton and Alex Littleton uh, that you saw earlier, and my husband David and I. We worked on this Habitat house yesterday and um, would love to see a State Street team out there maybe every Saturday. There's plenty of work to be done, and Megan, who's getting the house worked with us, and it's just... Um, a neat thing uh, to participate in and um, and uh, receive blessings from. Also, this coming Saturday, um, there is a Holston uh, Conference Day of Prayer that will be happening in United Methodist Churches all throughout our annual conference, and State Street is going to be one of the hosts of those days. Um, it will be simultaneously going on in four locations up in uh, Dublin, Virginia, in Knoxville, in Chattanooga, and here. Um, and we'll be gathering uh, to learn about prayer and the power of prayer and to practice uh, prayer together. Um, and uh, I think it will be a blessing. So we have 25 folks signed up so far coming here to State Street for that, and um, you would be very welcome uh, to join in as well. That's Saturday from 10 to 1. want to lift up sympathy for Helene Denny. We mentioned her last Sunday um, by the bedside of her sister. Her sister did die this past week, and um, those services were held yesterday in Maryland, so lifting up Helene and then Tom Casson, who's a regular participant with our older adult ministry group, has been diagnosed with terminal cancer and is also receiving hospice care. And Randall is here today, and his wife Allison and Aria. Um, the surgery has been postponed for a variety of different ways that he's uh, having to face brain surgery uh, that's happening. It is scheduled uh, for this week. They will be leaving Tuesday doing some tests, and if all goes well with those tests, the procedure will be happening on Thursday. So we send you with our prayers and blessings, and I know folks will be uh, lifting them up uh, this week. But let us go to God in prayer. Gracious God, we are people who sometimes prefer darkness over light. And sometimes we see ourselves as blameless, but we are quick to pass judgment on others. And we don't always stand firmly enough with those who are vulnerable, but we step back and focus on protecting ourselves. Forgive us, we pray. Bring us into your light that we may see ourselves rightly. Bring us into your light that we may know ourselves loved. Bring us into your light that we may live more fruitful lives. And we pray for your healing for those who are ill in mind or body or spirit. We pray for release to those who are held captive by old hurts or new bonds that oppress and entangle. And we pray that you would bring freedom to those unjustly accused or relief to those burdened with debt or comfort to all who suffer in shame. And we pray for the blessings of rain to fall and crops to grow and for generosity to overflow from our own hands and resources until all your children receive their daily bread, until all your children have clean water to drink, until all your children have adequate shelter and medical care. And loving God, help us to see the world with your eyes, to see others as you see them, and to be open and honest about ourselves as well. Because you have come into this world for truth and for judgment, we can leave our own judgments behind and leave them to you. And we take time now, gracious God, for some quiet prayer when each one of us can speak with you and hear your voice.
we offer all of our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ and we pray together in one voice the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our lives have a way of overflowing with the goodness of God, and so we bring forth our offerings this morning um, that folks give in so many ways. They give, um, and thank you for giving, in the offering box that we provide. They give online. They give um, all throughout the week in different ways, and thank you for um, the ways that our, we seek to let our abundance overflow and touch others. And let us pray. Most gracious God, as we bring these gifts to you, we pray your blessing upon them and upon our hearts that the generosity that, it, that you give to us can be reflected in the ways that we serve and share. In Jesus' name, amen.
Please stand and join in singing hymn number 534, Be Still My Soul. May be seated. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 11 and 19. Hear the word of God. The good fight of faith. But as for you, man of God, shun all this. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and for which you were made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the presence of God who gives life to all things and of Christ Jesus who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession, I charge you to keep the commandment without spot or blame until the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will bring about at the right time, he who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords. It is he alone who has immortality and dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. As for those who in the present age are rich, command them not to be haughty or to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but rather on God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, generous and ready to share, thus storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future, 
so that they may take hold of the life that really is life. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Let us pray. Holy God, and now may the words of my mouth and the meditations that come from all of our hearts, may they be acceptable in your sight. For we know that above all, you are our rock and our savior. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I want you to think for a minute about the most extraordinary act of generosity that you have ever witnessed. I may have told this story to you all before, but it continues to be the story that is the example for me. I'd like to say it was something that I did, but it wasn't. That would actually be the farthest from the truth. The most extraordinary act of generosity I ever saw was offered by a man who was homeless. And it was during a worship service I was leading as part of the homeless ministry at the church where I was serving, and we would provide transportation from several homeless shelters that were in this community, and we would provide a meal, and then we would share and worship together. And this was a very cold evening, and one of the men who came was wearing shoes that were falling apart and his toes were showing and they were purple from the cold and he might as well not have had any shoes on at all. Now, a couple of volunteers pointed this out during the dinner and so we had a little powwow off in the corner, you know, how we do sometimes and it's kind of like we called a committee meeting to try and figure out what we could do and we thought, well, we have these vouchers that we can give to him that he could take to a local thrift store and get some there, but that was going to help him tomorrow, uh, not tonight, and that would be helpful to him if he had a way to get there to the store. One of the volunteers said, well, I'll, you know, I'll go out and I'll get some, um, but, you know, how would I know what size or what? kind he would like I just that I don't know if that would work in our little huddle we were feeling pretty helpless and then out of the corner of my eye I watched as one of the other men who was there for the service who was also homeless he sat down in a chair he took off his own shoes and he went over to the man whose shoes were falling apart and he said here take these I have another pair back at the shelter. An extraordinary act of generosity. And it was quite humbling for us good church folks who had been having this powwow. Why didn't we think of that? How many pairs of shoes were in our closet that never even saw the light of day, much less provided warmth and comfort for someone who might not survive without them? Hadn't even crossed our mind. Do you own your possessions or do your possessions own you? That's one of the questions that Adam Hamilton poses in lifting up generosity and giving as one of the five essential practices of the Christian life that we've been looking at together during this Lenten season. Jesus puts it this way in Matthew chapter 6, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume, where thieves break in and steal, But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Now, Jesus probably talks about money and the dangers of wealth more than he does about anything else. 
which is kind of interesting because it's probably the topic that most preachers and churches avoid talking about as much as they can. So I'm like, I'm coming here with a little bit of shakiness going, oh, this is a hard message to bring from the scriptures. Now, do any of you have a red letter Bible, one that puts all the words attributed to Jesus in red? And there, in those words, Jesus says things like, sell your possessions and give the money to the poor. Jesus overturned tables of the money changers in the temple. Jesus spoke of the Pharisees as being lovers of money. You cannot serve God and wealth. How hard will it be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of heaven? Many of the parables and the stories focus on these dangers and also on unexpected examples of generosity, the lost coin, the widow's might. Reverend Hamilton shares how he walks around with a pocket Bible in one pocket and his billfold in the other. And every day he says what's in those two pockets are at war with each other. The wallet, it's tugging at his heart toward having more and acquiring more and spending more on himself. And then the Bible is calling him to think less of himself and more of other people and to give away what he has. And maybe that's why Jesus talks about money so much because he knows how it tugs at us. He knows what a struggle it is for us and our walk of faith. So if we say we want to walk with Jesus, we better be willing to take our pocketbooks with us on that walk because Jesus is going to have something to say about it. It's not money, though, that is evil. Money can be used, and we know and we've seen, for extraordinary things. One of the conversion stories Jesus shares is of his encounter with a man named Nicodemus, a tax collector whose heart was so moved by meeting Jesus and by the love that Jesus showed to him that he pledged to give half of his possessions to the poor and to pay back four times as much to anyone who believed they had been defrauded by him. Salvation has come to this house, Jesus says to Nicodemus. Money isn't the problem. The problem is all of our relationship with money and the power we give it. Do we own our possessions or do they own us? Adam Hamilton describes how the Greeks and Romans of his day, of Jesus' day, even had a fancy word to describe this problem, hedonism. And hedonism is all about the desire to minimize suffering and maximize pleasure. And that really doesn't sound bad at all, does it? It seems a worthwhile goal. But when that desire takes our heart and energy, that can become the problem. And especially here where we live, it's a problem that's very hard to resist. So many messages always being bombarded with, oh, you just need this or that to make you happier. If you just had a newer car, if you just had a better phone, if you just had an upgraded kitchen, if you just went on a better vacation, if you just had a different spouse, if you just had a different child, that was all you would need to find the happiness you so long for. Now, the main problem with this is that it does not work. Have you ever gone through buyer's remorse? You spend this time dreaming of something you want and you take time to research the options, maybe you save up for it, you have this vision of what you're going to feel when you have it in your hands, and then you have it, 
and you realize it doesn't bring you what you thought it was going to bring. And it looked very good online. It looked great in the catalog. It looked wonderful on the show, showroom floor, but when you get it home, when you start using it, it just doesn't have that magic. And you're starting to look for the next thing. The other thing about our possessions and all the things we accumulate is that that admonition, you can't take it with you, it's really true. We realize this when we see how quickly the things we put our heart and soul into holding on to can be lost. The flood that comes upon the basement, the natural disaster, the car crash, the bank failure, the stock market going up and down, all of those things that can seem so secure and so valuable, we've seen how they can be reduced to rubble, to nothingness. And yet they get so much of our energy and our time and even our anxiety and worry. And I'm asking myself this question, do I own my possessions or do my possessions own me? Yes, Jesus talks so much about money and the dangers of wealth because he cares so much for our souls. Jesus came to save us. So what do we do? Like the other essential practices of the Christian life we've been talking about, like worship and prayer and Bible reading and study and acts of kindness and serving, it's not rocket science at all. It's fairly basic stuff, and it's stuff we already know. The best antidote to hedonism the best way to fight the selfishness and greed that can take a hold of us, the weapon that is most powerful against these very powerful forces is generosity. Paul puts it so well in 1 Timothy and makes it so simple. Do good, be rich in good works, generous and ready to share. And Reverend Hamilton offers some keys that I think can give a real sense of what this can look like. And one of the keys to real, true, and lasting happiness, he says, is to learn to want what you already have. He calls this finding contentment. Paul calls it taking hold of life that really is life. Jesus calls this the gift of abundant life. And if you find yourself always seeking something you don't have, back up a minute and spend some intentional time giving thanks for what you do. Make a practice of giving thanks. Say it out loud. Write it down. Say it in your prayers. Share it with those you love. Make sure they know you treasure them. And we know people like that, don't we? People who seem so happy and content, even though they don't have much, maybe, or even though their lives are a daily struggle. And one of the common words we would usually use to describe these people is that they are thankful. They offer gratitude. They treasure what they have. The other thing about generosity is that it can bring us great joy. And that's what I was sharing when I was talking about volunteering yesterday at the Habitat House. There was joy in manual labor that um, I spent yesterday afternoon with an ice pack on my back and around my neck 
because of all the bending and holding and drilling and all of that. But I was happy, content, and I'm walking this morning. <laughs> there is joy in serving others. Think about those pay it forward movements when um, it was, there was a movie about it a long time ago, but now it happens if sometimes at a fast food line and you go and you find out that the person in front of you has paid your bill and then you want to pass that along and so you pay the one afterward and it becomes viral. I've seen accounts where it goes on for days, for weeks. There is joy in that kind of gratitude. Reverend Hamilton says, we're created in the image of God and God is generous. And we see God's generosity in so many ways and we see God's generosity depicted most vividly on the cross. This love for, for humanity being poured out because we are created in the image of this generous God, we are created for generosity to be regular, a regular rhythm for us as much as breathing. When we are generous, we walk closely with God and our generosity touches the heart of God and we become who God has made us to be. And there are so many ways we talk ourselves out of being generous, aren't there? We want to be sure we're doing it right. We don't want to be taken advantage of. We want to be sure our gift won't be wasted. We don't want to let go of control. We, all, we have these voices that, that talk us out of generosity. What if that were the way God gave to us to measure what we are given. Reverend Hamilton challenges us to think about five acts of extravagant generosity to do in a month's time. So between now and April, whatever today is, that we would think about five moments where something comes to us, where there's something that we have that if we were to share it with someone, they would receive blessing. Just five acts like that. You know, our hands can be such a visual for so many ways that we think about things. A hand that is tightly held isn't able to offer much and even sometimes can strike out in violence. When you have your hand tightly closed, it's hard to grasp the hand of another when you need someone to help bring you up out of a deep hole. They aren't able to feel the touch of a loving embrace if they are closed. So if you want to know love and experience love and be love, Open your hands and open your heart and be set free, free, free to be happy and free. Let us pray. Gracious God, this is tough stuff for us. Because we know how much of our hearts is caught up in things that we do want and that do bring us 
things we need. But we also know how our worries and anxiety in the pursuit of those things and the maintaining of those things and the deciding what to do with those things, how much that can just take over our whole hearts and shadow you. And so we, we need your help and we seek your spirit as we try to walk with you and as we try to tune our hearts and our hands and our lives to you so that we can all experience your amazing provisions, your extraordinary generosity and your empowering blessing. And we just are already giving you thanks, knowing that you will work miracles in our lives when we say yes to you. And we offer this prayer in Jesus' name, because he shows us the way. Amen. So I invite us to sing a hymn that reminds us of all that God provides, blessed assurance. We'll stand. This is our story, this is our song, the generosity of God. And we see that generosity and we carry it with us, this grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, this love of God that surpasses all understanding, this spirit that instills in us all that we need. Go forth in that blessing. Amen.